Well, so, so uh, in terms of education, uh, I mean, I so I teach at the undergraduate level and, and uh, in this fall and at the graduate level in the spring. Um, and obviously I have many grad students and postdocs. Um, so, so one of the things you, you have to find yourself and make sure you do for the undergraduates, in fact, when you teach to anybody, is make sure you understand the initial conditions for the students coming in. It is what do they understand and, 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 and so that when you're talking to them, you talk to them from the same sort of level of understanding. Otherwise, there'll be a disconnect and there'll be a separation between sort of the, the things that they understand uh, and, and possibly could then utilize in terms of uh, how they might understand what you're actually saying. And so when you talk to grad students and work with them, you're trying to help them understand research. So this is sort of now you're at the education level of research. Uh, so it's not like you're in a class learning about optimal control. You're now helping them understand what the research process is like itself. So that's an educational process too. So you have students come in and they typically a PhD student would be here for about five years. And they will come in with some level of background, having done work hopefully in an educational environment, research environment prior to coming to MIT. But now they come here and we have obviously have two pieces. There's a master's thesis and the PhD. The master's is a research uh, focus for two years. And typically within that process, what I'd be looking for the students to do is to pick up on the ability to sort of execute at the level of the state of the art. So you're trying to get them to help them understand uh, sort of you know, what, what are interesting things to work on, what are interesting solutions that might exist, uh, begin to work with them and sort of utilize them themselves. And, 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 and the typical thought process there is one of, you know, helping the students to learn how to do various things like coding and operating a lab and things like that, but then also working in terms of just how to implement an algorithm. So you read something, you try to implement it, you download some code, you figure out how to get it running. And the sooner you can get that done, then typically what you start figuring out are the limitations of what the state of the art is. And so at a master's level, you don't necessarily need to innovate much. It's great if you do, but they sort of don't have to. Uh, but what you're looking for is an understanding of the limitations. So it's like, I tried something, I got it working, but now I understand what the issues of it are. And this is what leads to the next step, which is sort of where the innovation comes in and you extend the state of the art by saying, okay, I'm trying to do X, you know, this can't do X, what's wrong with it? Uh, and now I can start thinking about how I can fix it, right? And this is where the innovation cycle starts happening. So what you're trying to work with with students is by the time they get to the PhD, by the end, the innovation cycle is typically on the scale of weeks. In the beginning, it's maybe on the scale of years. And you try to help them through that process of speeding that, speeding that up and just get them to the point where they can understand sort of what they're trying to do, you know, what might exist and what the limitations of it are, and as a result, the gaps. Like, what is it that's necessary that they can contribute? So often I describe the research process as one of finding, identifying those gaps, making sure they're big enough that it's worth doing work on that gap. And if it is a big enough gap in the current capabilities of the state of the art, uh, then what you're looking for is, you know, additional things you can add to the state of the art will actually start uh, sort of advancing it and then hopefully addressing the questions that you really care about.